right now on 5 on your side at 10. Windy warmth. The gusty breeze sticks with us Tuesday. I'll show you when storm chances signal big changes. Honoring our heroes who gave the ultimate sacrifice. The ceremonies on both sides of the river and why today wasn't always known as Memorial Day. First tonight, a young man pulled from the Merrimack River from a spot rescue crews are all too familiar with. This is a dangerous river, especially on weekends like this. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. Mike and Ann have the holiday off. Tonight, a 19-year-old man is dead after he slipped into the Merrimack River. It happened this afternoon at Castlewood State Park in West St. Louis County. Our Travis Cummings was there. He joins us in studio now. Travis, this isn't the first time we've reported on people falling into the water in that area. Yeah, Brent, we just got that death confirmed about 30 minutes ago. And yes, this is very common around this time. It's a holiday a warm one. People want to get out and enjoy the water with family, no doubt, but officials say you have to know what you're dealing with. That river can look inviting. It looks calm. It, it, it looks like a, a great place to swim. The Merrimack River, a magnet for families this Memorial Day. While it looks ideal for boating and hanging with the family, it is really a dangerous place uh, to, to be. Lieutenant Matt Coppin with the Metro West Fire Protection District and his rescue crew rushing to the Riverland Castlewood State Park on the holiday afternoon to help a 19 year old man who was standing on the shoreline. People who were with the teen told rescue crews he slipped and fell in. He went underwater and was underwater for about 15 minutes until some of those same bystanders that he was with was able to pull him out of the water. The young man was taken to a local hospital in critical condition. In June last year, a 16 year old girl drowned in the Merrimack at Castlewood. A few weeks before, a 30 year old man jumped off a train bridge near Sherman Beach, just west of the park and never resurfaced while the outcome of this case is still unfolding. Officials say there's a couple of critical lessons to be learned here, starting with being aware of what's underneath the water. There's um, you know, currents that'll pull people out. Uh, there's debris underwater. We've had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks, um, so that there's a lot of trees and limbs and, and things underneath the water. And when you're going into any natural body of water to wear the proper gear. In this case, this uh, individual wasn't even swimming, uh, but ended up in the river and these kind of accidents do happen. So uh, it, it's a, such a simple thing to wear a life jacket and it truly can save a life. Yeah, it truly is. And the Missouri Highway Patrol is now handling the investigation. They report 14 deaths tied to boat and drowning incidents since this year started. This will mark the 15th drowning. Brent. Travis, thanks for that report. Tonight, St. Louis County Police investigating after finding a body in the Miramac River just north of Arnold. Investigators were called to Seacoast Lane off 141 around 530 tonight. We're told they found an adult's human remains. If you have any info, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. You can remain anonymous. A windy and warm night across St. Louis to end the long holiday weekend, but expect another hot one tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell also tracking the chances of thunderstorms in our future. We are, but those storms are not headed our way tonight. In fact, you know, we really couldn't have a nicer Memorial Day weekend weather-wise. You look at Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Temperatures today, obviously, the warmest out of the bunch, up to 89 degrees. And we're still around 80 in the metro area tonight as you look into North St. Louis County, up around Florissant at this point. We're talking temperatures across the region that have been on the warm side. They will stay on the warm side overnight. Even the coolest spots are down into the mid-70s at this hour. And with breezes out of the south during the overnight hours, you're just not going to see those temperatures drop off all that much. The severe weather threat, well, that's well to our west and north. New thunderstorms are erupting right now just off to the southeast of Omaha, but they are not headed in our direction tonight. It will stay breezy, mild, and mainly clear overnight. Bright and quite warm to start your Tuesday. We do think clouds are on the increase tomorrow afternoon, and that storm chance, well, it really ramps up as we head into tomorrow night. We'll talk more about the timing of that and what threats we might be looking at if those storms can maintain their intensity as they head towards St. Louis. See you in about 12 minutes, Brent. All right, Scott, we'll see you then. New information tonight about a boating accident at the Lake of the Ozarks over the weekend. We now know two 13-year-olds and a 41-year-old man were thrown from their boat last night. 
This happened near Lake of the Ozark State Park at Grand Glaze. The Missouri State Highway Patrol telling us the boat was going too fast and hit rough water and rolled. We're told they're all expected to survive their injuries. Well, it is race week at Worldwide Technology Raceway and crews are working around the clock to get the track ready for NASCAR's brightest stars. Tonight, Five on Your Side's Holden Kerwicki is getting a look at what you can expect. It's all quiet right now at Worldwide Technology Raceway, but that's going to change with sellout crowds expected this weekend. And we're probably going to be having an ex excess of 80,000 people over the course of the three days. All race fans are used to Indy cars speeding around the mile and a quarter racetrack. This will be the first time NASCAR's Cup Series has made a pit stop in the Metro East. These guys really are, are aggressive. It's bumper to bumper, beating and banging uh, you know, for 300 miles. So it, it's going to be a, a really incredible show. Fans from 49 states, four Canadian provinces, and five countries have already bought tickets. But exactly what can they expect once they get there? From the moment you pull on the grounds, there's a wow factor. An overhauled infield now features a soundstage that will host stars such as Nelly, Cole Swindell, and Old Dominion. There's just so many things to see and do, and it all comes as part of the race ticket, so it's an incredible value. If the grandstand is more your speed, you'll find expanded concessions and new picnic tables if you need to tap the brakes. But Raceway GM Chris Blair is pulling out all the stops to make sure you don't miss a second of the action. For this, an event of this magnitude, we've also brought in more video screens than probably any other track on the circuit. Uh, we'll have over eight video screens. Uh, around the venue, so anywhere you go, and even if you leave your seat to go grab a drink, you can watch the races on the midway, which that's something that a lot of tracks don't do. So we really put a whole lot of technology into this program. Tailgaters are expected to start rolling into the racetrack on Wednesday, but the big change is going to start on Friday when they shift the traffic pattern around the raceway. For more information on those changes, you're going to want to go to our website, kstk.com, and click on the link to this story under the As Seen on TV tab. Reporting in Madison, Illinois, Holden Kerwicki, Five on your side. All right, Holden, sounds exciting. Today, Americans all across the country pause this Memorial Day to remember those who died in uniform. Big crowds gather to pay respects to the fallen at the Soldiers Memorial in downtown St. Louis. The names of more than 5,000 fallen soldiers from St. Louis are etched in memorials there. Some Gold Star families attended a ceremony in their honor this morning. We just hope that these people who gave so much to all of us are just never forgotten. And Memorial Day is more than just barbecues and swimming. And so that's why we always try to do something and let them all know that we're, we're still thinking of them. Now, this memorial was initially built to honor the sacrifice of the city's soldiers who died in World War I. And this morning, thousands came out to Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery to honor our fallen veterans. Now, for the first time since COVID, the cemetery held its Memorial Day ceremony honoring the Civil War. Around 12,000 Union soldiers are buried there. Over the weekend, dozens of Boy Scouts spent their time placing an American flag on each gravesite at Jefferson Barracks. <laughs> President Biden laying a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery today. With the U.S. military pullout of Afghanistan last year, this is the first Memorial Day in 20 years that the nation is not at war. And Americans have taken time at the end of May to recognize those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. But did you know the day used to be called something different? Our Verified team looks into the history of Memorial Day. Here's Arianne Dato. On the last Monday in May, a wreath is placed on the tomb of the unknown soldier. American flags are placed on the grave sites of fallen soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. Symbols of Memorial Day, a time to honor our fallen service members. But is it true that Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day? Using these sources, let me walk you through the history of the holiday and why its name changed. 
When the first national celebration of the modern Memorial Day holiday took place at Arlington National Cemetery on May 30th, 1868, the holiday was called Decoration Day. According to the Library of Congress, John A. Logan, commander in chief of an organization of Union Army veterans, established May 30th as Decoration Day, a time for the nation to decorate the graves of fallen Civil War soldiers with flowers. But tributes to soldiers lost in the Civil War occurred throughout the country before the 1868 observance. The U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs says approximately 25 places, many in the South, have been linked to the holiday's origins. After World War I, the holiday was expanded to honor all fallen soldiers. In 1938, Congress recognized Decoration Day as a federal holiday. According to the Constitution Center in Philadelphia, Memorial Day became a more popular name for the holiday after World War II. And in 1967, the federal government officially adopted the new name. Then, in 1971, a law was passed that changed the holiday from May 30th to the last Monday in May. So there you have it. Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day, and it wasn't always celebrated on the last Monday in May. With your Fast Fact, I'm Ariante Till. Learn something new every day. What would you like us to verify? You can reach out to us by emailing verify at ksdk.com. Healing Uvalde. The building needs to be gone, taken away. The mayor of the Texas town on moving forward and gun control as his community prepares to bury 19 students and two teachers. Reaching for a late night snack, the reason many can't drop those pounds, how to avoid the nibbles at night. The severe weather threat doesn't include any of us tonight, but storm chances do increase about 24 hours. I'll show you where that severe weather threat will be then. Tomorrow marks one week since a gunman walked into a Texas elementary school murdering 19 students and two teachers. Today, the first funerals were held. This as people continue to pay their respects at a growing memorial outside of the school. Tonight, the mayor of Uvalde says despite the tragedy, his community will get through. He's now calling on national lawmakers to take action when it comes to mental health and gun control. We need both parties to come together and say, look, Let's sit down at the table and come up with common sense rules and get rid of this my way or the highway attitude on both sides, Republican and Democrat, because that's not what we elected you for. The mayor also says the plan is to tear down Robb Elementary School and build a new school in its place. He says no one, especially a child, should have to walk through those halls again. Let's take a live look at St. Louis Lambert International Airport tonight, which escaped the brunt of flight frustrations over the holiday weekend. More than 6,000 global flights have been canceled since Friday, with hundreds more flights delayed because of staffing shortages for those cancellations and delays. Hot days like today make great pool days. Between community pools and water parks, there are lots of spots to cool down but not all are open. Several local pools are now looking for more lifeguards. The city of St. Louis opened two pools this weekend, but had to keep the Chambers pool closed. St. Charles County opted to close the McNair Aquatic Facility because of a lifeguard shortage. St. Louis County also looking for lifeguards. Well, have you ever considered grabbing a little snack before bed? If so, you're not alone. Over half of Americans say they get the munchies at night. As Consumer Reports explains, all of those snacks before bed can impact your health. Here's Mike Bush. Rosemary Silva lost nearly 75 pounds and says she feels better than she has in 20 years. She kept full by eating healthy meals during the day and replaced nighttime snacks with water. It was hard for me to stop snacking. Mentally, I had to teach myself that no, you know, once you're done with dinner and then you're done. And to clean the kitchen and get out of the kitchen, there's no need for you to be in there. Studies suggest that nighttime eating can lead to higher cholesterol and blood glucose levels, as well as weight gain. If you find yourself standing in front of the fridge light rather than the night light, Consumer Reports has some simple tips to ease out of evening eating. Our bodies do certain things better at different times of the day. Like in the morning, it does a better job controlling your blood sugar after a meal than it would later in the day. A recent study indicates that people who eat an early morning breakfast had better blood sugar control, which could reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. 
and getting the majority of your calories during the day should help you stave off nighttime snacking. Shine a light on your nighttime nibbling by keeping a food journal. Keeping a log of what you eat can be an effective tool to help you lose weight and alter behaviors. A lack of sleep has been linked to overeating. Going to bed an hour earlier means you'll have more time to sleep and less time to snack. A higher protein diet has been linked to reduced hunger. Keep full with small servings of chicken, fish, with colorful veggies for meals, and protein-filled snacks like yogurt or nuts. Lastly, keep your hands busy, playing cards, folding laundry while you watch TV, or doing a puzzle at night can help keep you from snacking. Mike Bush, five on your side. And one more tip from the experts. If you have the urge to snack, do it by sitting at your table using a fork or spoon. You'll be less likely to overeat than if you just grab something straight out of a bag. The city of Belleville marking this Memorial Day with a parade downtown. It ended at Walnut Hill Cemetery where veterans and their families gathered to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And the annual Folds of Honor campaign sponsored by Schnucks is now underway. From now until July 4th, you can round up at the register. The money raised provides scholarships for spouses and children of fallen and wounded service members. Five on Your Side is a proud partner of the Folds of Honor campaign. And the Cherokee Caravan returned to Cherokee's Antique Row today. The event started back in 2018 after the Gypsy Caravan Memorial Day flea market ended its 45 year run. Now this was the third year for the Cherokee Caravan. It was put on pause for two years because of the pandemic. Time now to get a closer look at the forecast for all of the changes and updates. Scott Connell. Well, Brent, we are talking about another warm evening. You know, we have plenty of sunshine today. You look at the time lapse here. Not much in the way of cloud cover from time to time. A few high clouds, but as the sun was setting this evening, it was doing so on a very warm day across the by state area. 89 degrees our official high. That's above average. Of course, nowhere near the record. This time of year, our records are well into the 90s, but very warm on the dry side today. That's good news. As we head into tonight, though, here's some comet news for you. We have the debris from an old comet that may be coming in and with skies mainly clear at the moment, there is a chance we could see a meteor shower coming up in the next couple of hours. It's the debris from Comet 7 3 P Schwachman Walkman back in the 1930s when it was discovered. So you're talking about sand sized particles and dust particles, maybe up to the size of pea gravel that might give us some pretty good meteors tonight. A midnight peak is predicted if it happens. We don't know until we see if that debris actually gets into Earth's atmosphere. And so we don't know if it's really going to be something or if it's not. Now we're seeing some reports on social media that people are seeing a few shooting stars out there. So potentials there. Farther north and west, the potential is higher for severe weather, and it'll stay to our north and west overnight tonight and through most of the day tomorrow. First little batch of storms that kind of fizzle, but now there's another line of storms that's developing across parts of Kansas and then on up into portions of Iowa all the way up into Wisconsin. New severe thunderstorm watches for these areas here out to our west and northwest that will fall apart before it ever has a chance to get here, but the winds are out of the south. That's keeping us warm. We may see some of that high cloud cover try to streak our way towards daybreak. But for the most part, we're thinking that's going to just kind of follow the flow with the atmosphere and take it on to the north until this front gets a little closer to St. Louis. Out ahead of it, we're very warm tomorrow. Temperatures are around 90. It'll be a little more humid, especially going south of St. Louis. And as that warm, humid air feeds up against that front, we do expect to see some thunderstorms, some of which could be strong, potentially severe, more likely to see the severe storms as you head out into parts of Kansas. Kansas and Oklahoma, but that's not to say we won't see a stronger storm or two, especially coming at us from mid Missouri as we head into the late evening and overnight hours. The theory is this activity as it moves towards St. Louis towards daybreak 
going to fizzle. It loses the daytime heat, so not a big chance for severe weather here. During the day on Wednesday, you'll see most of the action south of St. Louis. Obviously, with more clouds and that rain chance, it's cooler. Thursday, the rain chances would be in the morning, and then we'll shove it on out of here as we head into Thursday afternoon. 81 right now, still looking at that south breeze at 7 miles per hour and still a little bit gusty at times. Temperatures tonight, upper 60s, low 70s. You've got thunderstorms at night on Tuesday, but during the day it is dry. Very warm, 92 for the high, 79 on Wednesday. Chance for showers and storms, mostly south of St. Louis. Then early showers possible here on Thursday. We get into Friday and Saturday dry. Small chance for a shower and thunderstorm by Sunday. Another comfortable weekend's on the way, Brent. All right, we love a comfortable weekend. Thank you, Scott. Well, don't go far. Sports next. And wait till you hear who Jason Tatum texted before last night's Game 7. Paul Goldschmidt had a day, and so did some incredible wiffle ball players in the St. Louis area. Stick around, please. In basketball, having a big three is paramount to winning a lot of games. I felt that way about the Cardinals if they had three power hitters this season. Going in, you were counting on Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and Tyler O'Neill. O'Neill got hurt, but the Cardinals may have found another. His name is Nolan Gorman, and I think he made believers out of the Padres today. Gorman went deep in the third inning, 403 feet. He was three for three with a walk. Cardinals led it two to one. This 22-year-old is a slugger. Now here's a pitcher to keep an eye on. Andre Pallante, he went three and a third today. He struck out five, and his season ERA is just over one. He notched his first big league win. Goldschmidt could be the best hitter on the planet Earth right now. He extended his hit streak to 21, his consecutive on base streak to 35. His 11th homer of the season gave him 22 extra base hits in May. Only Stan and Albert have ever done that before. And the Cardinals going to beat the Padres six to three. And oh, by the way, did Palante get the ball for his first big league win? No, I haven't got it yet. Hopefully someone has it, but uh, we'll see. I'll let you know in a couple days. Did you keep it or did your dad? Or my dad got my debut ball, my first strikeout ball, so I'll keep this one for myself. <laughs> a St. Louis product will be the best player on an NBA Finals team. It happened once before with JoJo White in 1976. Now it's time for Jason Tatum. The pride of Chaminade. He was magnificent in Game 7 last night in Miami. You probably already know that. But did you know before that game that Jason actually texted Kobe Bryant's number? He still kept it in his phone. He revered the late, great legend who was a mentor to him. Tatum was named the MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm sure Kobe was watching. So holiday weekends often come with traditions. For two decades now, Tradition of wiffle ball has been sacred on Manchester. Our Corey Miller has the story. <laughs> Let's go, Jer! That a baby! Memorial Day weekend and wiffle ball. Not a bad pair. For 20 years, the Skibby Wiffle Ball League has been a marriage of those two things. Even when I'm planning this, it almost feels like a wedding. Every Memorial Day weekend, that wedding is a sight to behold at the Skibby residence in Manchester. And if you think this league is unlike anything you've ever seen, you'd be right. These guys go all out. With 70 players playing wiffle ball almost continuously from Friday through Monday, with all the frills to go along with it, this league is something special. Oh, and they have a good taste in TV stations too. Five, one. <laughs> for childhood friends to keep this going two years, let alone 20, is impressive. And for that, it stands as a league of its own. And it's out of here. This is unlike anything anybody in the country has. There was one person who came from a different league around the country, and he said, when asked the question, is this league the best he's been a part of? And this weekend, he said, was the best he's ever been a part of. There's strikeouts, big flies, passionate fans, barbecue, and a few more kids running around than there was a decade ago. But above all, this league is about one simple thing, and it delivers each and every year. Everybody comes together just to have a good time, and it's an event that people look forward to more than just the game itself. In Manchester, Corey Miller, Five on Your Side Sports. I cannot believe it's been 20 years. Round of applause for everybody. <laughs> It really is amazing, and they keep great statistics. Mm -hmm. They're big analytics guys, 
and they just do this every year. It's, wow. it's an awesome scene. Yeah, and they have quite the audience, too. They do. The fan club. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for that, Frank. Well, coming up, people are running to Taco Bell to get a Mexican pizza. We'll tell you why they're uh, leaving empty-handed. A man is in police co custody accused of throwing a piece of cake on the Mona Lisa. He told shocked onlookers he did it to get them to think about the planet. The priceless masterpiece by Leonardo da Vinci was not damaged because it's protected by glass. All right, take a look at the mess. 300,000 Indy 500 fans left behind. Today, more than 750 volunteers cleaned up all the trash left behind Sunday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Besides empty bottles and cans and food wrappers, people left behind lawn chairs and even coolers. Well, just a week after returning to the menu, Taco Bell is running out of Mexican pizza. On his website, the fast food chain says restaurants across the country are running out because they're actually working to restock with suppliers. Taco Bell is also delaying the premiere of its Mexican pizza TikTok musical, which will star Dolly Parton. Well, that's it. For 5 on your side at 10, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Chris Pratt is Jimmy's guest.